But what do we got next on DC? Do we know? Well, you know, this 16th is uh, apparently DC Universe for where we're, right, or right, whatever, right. is where you get to see everything upcoming. I think the next thing is the Batman. Oh, oh yeah. so excited. So excited. Oh my, we're going to have to do oh, a Batman gonna, episode. Oh, my God. We have to do it, like, in the car on the way back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to start recording on the phone. I think that's the best way. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. Why not? Or bring my camera and just put it up there with the gimbal and be like, hey, everybody. <laughs> Chumps. <We'll> just <laughs> Wasted your money seeing this movie. Ruined my life and my marriage. Disgraced against my country and my sister. No, no, no. Even we'll just bring the phones in the theater. And we'll do a live commentary while the movie. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> we'll have uh, forty thousand streamers, and we'll be confused as to why. <laughs> no, but you're right. You're right. It's either going to be like this was the most incredible experience I ever had, or I was so emotionally devastated at how disappointing it was. <laughs> let, let me give you a Who nightmarish knows? thought. What if? Yeah. Oh, what if the movie we go in and it turns out to be a political thriller? Like, hear me out. Like, all the okay. stuff we saw in the trailers, those were the highlights. But actually, most of it is Bruce Wayne talking to some sort of, let's say, female congresswoman who's trying to make Gotham better. But Batman sees the corruption or something. And the whole time, he's having to talk to people in suits. He's like, you think you're going to get away with it? It's like, we already have. And then every once in a while, they show him out at night. What would you do? Hmm. What would you do if it's this only an hour and 20 heard. minutes? What would you do? I'd have to see it. I'm not going to judge what you're saying it. <laughs> it's going to happen! That's what the movie no. will be! <laughs> Are you serious? Oh. No! Please, please no. no. Please, no. Oh, I thought you heard like a leak or something. You scared no, me a that, bit, that would be so be stupid. Oh, man. But now that I, I, I remember the trailer, and I feel so much relief because I have a good feeling that that's totally not what it's going to be. <laughs> I heard it was well, really good. not to I get ahead scary. of it. Right, I heard the the previews were good, but also I don't want to go too much off that trailer because that trailer was done when it was like ten or twenty percent of footage done. Yeah. So like, I don't want to base the whole movie off of it, but yeah, like you said, the the previews seem to be pretty good, so I'm excited. Heard the ears changed. The the what? The ears on his on his cow oh, changed really? mid production. Yeah. Yeah, the suit is interesting. I don't hate it, but it's interesting. I like it. But anyway, it's only the ears do I have a problem with. Oh, the placement so is happy. a little weird. Yeah, That's it's it. interesting how it could look unsettling depending on where you put them. <laughs> yeah. It kind of looks like horns because it's not completely on the side. It's like kind of rounded out and then it comes out. I'm like, what? What? You ever yeah. think about that? Batman has bat ears. True, not horns. You ever thought about that? Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm trying to think of like what the. I feel like the Arkham game, the first one, did a really good job with that. I like, I um, like Arkham Batman. Origins um, suit. Is that what you meant? Or the original? Yeah, well, version? yeah, actually. Well, I was thinking about the original when I said that, but I, I think the Arkham community as a whole just can agree that Arkham Origins suit is fantastic. The Arkham Origins game is fantastic, but yeah. I know, but not a lot of people agree on it because they don't want to see it as story canon. By the way, you can edit this part as much as you want, but we're, oh, we're just talking now. Um, of course. I, I really oh, yeah. love it. I actually was the one I played all the way through first. I played most of Arkham Asylum, but then I played Arkham Origins. The one reason why I like the Arkham Origins suit is that it's the only one that seems like that looks like the real suit. Like, I, mm -hmm. if you look at the details, it's like it's very, very practical. You're like, hey, that actually looks like what it'd be. Arkham Knight is super high tech, so it's like, whoa. But I love it. Yeah. But you know, it's it's like Arkham Origin suit is like that is, that is a, a real suit. It's what I'd wear. Yeah, I just think there's so much about that game that works. Like, I love that it's Christmas. I oh, love yeah. the very like stripped down plot of him just with all these, uh, you know, assass or what do you call them? People trying to assassinate him. League of Assassins, Seven Assassins. Hitman, whatever. Yeah. Um, I think the boss fights are incredible. I don't think I've ever played another game where I was like literally afraid of the boss fights. I was like, this is intimidating. Yeah. You know, and then I, I just, I think this, I love the Joker origin. I love how he's like this crazy young guy. I just think it's cool. Yeah, I wasn't even expecting that. I didn't know um, Joker was going to have a part when I started playing it. Because I guess I didn't watch a lot of the trailers or anything like that. 
I thought it was just Black Mask and what he's doing or whatever. Um, And from what I understand, because I was confused at first, I thought the whole time Joker was Black Mask. That's not necessarily true. Um, It was Black Mask, and then Joker, out of nowhere, beat him up, took his identity in the middle of it. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's happening. Or happened. Also, even, even despite that, I think that was like the best Black Mask interpretation I've ever seen. You definitely, know, definitely, definitely better than Birds of Prey version. <laughs> I didn't even see that one because I most of the time I saw him with his mask off, and I'm like, well, it is mm-hmm. Ewan McGregor. You kind of want to take advantage of paying him for do this and show his image, but it's like Black Mask is Black Mask. He should right. be Black Masked. <laughs> yeah, and the mask I, I'm expecting that on honestly. his face. <laughs> I like. Uh, I think the Origins one is more like. A, it's almost like a. It's like a very skin tight, like opera mask type of feel. Yeah. And I think that just that made him feel like an expensive crime lord, whereas in Birds of Prey it was like this chunky, almost <laughs> like Mayan design, like an old like Native American design. I just yeah, didn't feel right. My favorite Deathstroke is from Arkham Origins. I loved oh, so that good. Deathstroke. And I think all the designs since have based it off of that video game. Because he was done yeah. so well. The suit is so good. The helmet is perfect. <laughs> Look at the helmet. Oh, yes, yeah, very good. Look at the helmet. Ah, did you, at you've it. seen the... Uh, no, I'm looking at it right now. No, I, I love the it's grading. Like, so, like, yeah, and so like crisp and like damaged. Yeah, way better. Like, uh, you know, I Arrow's done it. Um, Not that I watched all sorry, of Arrow. Um, but when I saw Arrow's, it was so... I mean, you know, that's the thing. I'm comparing it to this version, which is really yeah. good. Um, the Justice League version is pretty good, but yet again... I think it's trying to be like this version, and still, I think this version is better. They should hire the guys who worked on this game to do the designs in the movie. Well, and if I may, it's it's easier to design a costume in a game than it is in a movie. Because, like, even the Black Mask mask, like, in the game, it's very contoured to his face. Like, it's super, like, his yes. mask is literally his head shape. And yeah. I just don't think, realistically, it's easy. I don't think it's impossible, but I don't think it's easy to make such a perfect mask. I don't think it's easy to make this Deathstroke costume. Because I, I think the one in Arrow was a chunky mask for Deathstroke. It yeah. was like, dang, bro. Like, your, your whole body is, like, chunky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm looking it up now. Oh. And I just think to make... Wow. I don't think it's impossible, but I just think they, they end up glossing over it. Because it's difficult. Yeah, look, I get it, um, because I'm in there. I'm in that boat, too, to some extent. Um, But I think, um, you know, that's that's what I realized with Mortal Kombat, too, is, like, I was like, Sub-Zero's mask is so giant. Why is that thing so huge in proportion to his face? But then I realized that these are real people, real actors who have standards for themselves. It's like, if they can barely breathe, they're going to walk off set. So, you know, this isn't... It's not like the passion of the director is just going to flow into... um, the the actors it's like if the actors like look i can't move i'm having a hard time breathing i'm sweating in every corner of my body i'm having a panic attack right now that's it i i i I can't do this right now i can't do this it's like you don't want to do that either you want them to feel good so it's like you know i i understand i understand video games you can make them your slave well, I just think to bring it home, Arkham Origins art design is phenomenal. And I think that's the best thing about that game. Every yeah. aspect of it just breathes. Like, I'm looking at these stills, and it's just gorgeous. And I mean, if you pull up the Joker in that game, gorgeous art design. Like, he's he looks crazy, but he looks smart. He looks sleek. He looks dangerous. Yeah. You know? He doesn't look like this, like, in the other games where his, like, face is half, like, torn apart. He looks like this very, very specific guy. And I just think, like, the suit is perfect. The snowy landscape is perfect. I even mm-hmm. think... I Shout out to Tim Miller. I, it's fantastic. Um, this is one of the first games that did, like, cinematic trailer. Where instead of just gameplay, they had, like, a storyline trailer. Yeah, yeah. And he, uh, he directed that. He also directed the first Deadpool and, like, a lot of animated stuff. Oh, but, yeah. um... Those are fantastic where they use motion capture to do like a Deathstroke versus Batman fight scene that's just crisp and beautiful and Yeah. I just yeah, I think I think people people hate on the gameplay but they're missing just how wonderful the art design is. 
I'm surprised that they hate on the gameplay. I actually heard that they thought that it was too different. The story was too different from the other games somehow. Um, mm -hmm. I don't really feel. I didn't know that they were made by different companies. Um, Origins yeah, yeah. from the other video games that came out. I I didn't know mm -hmm. that they were from different companies. Apparently, there were different companies that made Origins. Um, yes. But it is actually canon because the stuff that happens in Origins is relevant in Night. Um, right. And this is completely unrelated, and I'm going to say it anyways. Azrael in Arkham Knight is one of my favorite designs of anything ever. Mm -hmm. And have you watched Gotham? I have seen Gotham, yes. You Did you see Azrael <laughs> in Gotham? Yes, yes, yes. yes. It sucked! It's terrible. It sucked! <laughs> no, everyone knows it's... Gotham. It's just, it, it's a laughing thing at this point. You watch it to laugh. Azrael in Ar the Arkham games is the coolest thing that's ever happened to me. It was a pride of my country and my sister, and it saved my marriage. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm wearing okay. that to next Comic Con. <laughs> it's oh, just man, too they cool. Have like a, this is cool. They have like the um, the turntable of the character sculpt for Azrael in here. Yeah, yeah. Did you ever gotcha. did you ever play Arkham Knight? I did actually, yeah. I I own it. I'm I think I'm about halfway through it, but um, but yeah, I did do some of the Azrael missions, and you get to it, play as him, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's, that's right, and you get to choose uh, the ending for Azrael. Um, Ooh, I didn't know that. And I'm the good ending is when you choose not to try to kill Bat Batman, because um, yeah, he's essentially being mind controlled by some sort of higher order that's made him think. Make, made him think that everything he's doing is for some sort of holy um, right. you know, so, some sort of holy task in the name of God and he finds out that he's been you get the choice either to follow through and believe that you're not being manipulated and you're really doing the right thing and kill Batman or you essentially break your own sword and say I thought I was a, a servant of God not of man and walk away all angry seeking out the revenge of those who tried to mind control you I'm like this is so cool this is so cool man that was, that was cool cool character good story and if you don't do that it's really a dumb ending because you try to kill Batman it doesn't work and he just throws you in the back of his car and brings you to prison the end <laughs> wow spoilers <laughs> it's been out for like <laughs> uh, you know I wonder I wonder if live action movies would do better to have like some serious like pre-production art design because you know video these video games go through heavy 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 concepting like crazy amounts yeah. of concepting and I think that's yeah. why these characters look so good if you like really want to get into the deep of it Joe, yo I think one thing I've been learning a lot of recently is that a lot of these, the higher up you go when it comes to how big the company is and the more mm. employees that they hire, the more it becomes both a money laundering scheme, as terrible as that sounds and silly as that may seem, and it becomes more of a connections-based hierarchy for where if you're a rich guy and your kid's lazy but he really likes doing some art and he's only halfway good, they'll hire that halfway good lazy kid of the rich guy to do the costume designs for a movie before they'll hire that 27 year old costume designer for Arkham Knight because he's a nobody who came from nobody even though he's really good and it will all simply be based upon my dad is this guy and out of nowhere they're given that position like how many times do we ever see somebody for these bigger film companies right you, you out of nowhere you see these people just randomly seemingly seemingly randomly become either a producer or some sort of executive over something and it's like well what's your portfolio nothing they're just there and it's like well who, right. who put you there and really it's just this you know trickle down of connections that brings them there a lot of the time when it comes to these big companies not always sometimes that's the thing is that if, if you can find a good in between like a medium budget in these bigger companies and a company actually isn't as invested in what you're making which means they're kind of stepping out of it a little bit more, you probably are able to do a lot more and a lot better with a lot more detail. I think that's kind of what happened with the first Spider-Man. Like, they gave him a lot of money, but they weren't gambling that Spider-Man was going to be the best thing in the universe. They just thought, oh, you know, Spider-Man movie, let him, let him do what he's going to do. And they went all the way, dude. You know, they just went all the way. But by the time right. they reached the third movie, now they're all involved. Now they're bringing people in that shouldn't be there. 
Now it's about casting, you know, connections, and it's not really about the story as much as it is the politics and their assumed economics of what they think would be best for it, rather than what the general people know is actually good. Right. That's sad. <laughs> no, but, but a little I bit may, of a mouthful, like, but that's kind of how it is. No, I, but I think it's changing, frankly. I think with, like, Netflix, and I think with the internet, and I think with crowdfunding... I think I think it's going to continue that way and I think you're going to get a lot more original creators just doing it on their own, you know. Yeah. Like even yeah. even for me, the the thought of making a movie for a company is not exciting. The thought of no. making my own movie with a fan base that's cr- supporting me through crowdfunding and even being creative and finding ways to make things on a small budget. That's way more exciting than selling my idea to some Crowd, like table of producers and having them dictate what happens yeah so you know once disney buys all the studios and becomes this mega monster <laughs> then everyone's just going to start going indie on their films and we're going to have this major war between independent filmmakers and disney and disney's going to win and take over the world and we're <laughs> going to be disney slaves Disney wants to buy the sun. <laughs> Disney wants to blow up the sun. <laughs> oh, Disney. You know, what What I was thinking about earlier is that if that happens, as crazy as this is, what Which indie part? filmmakers will do, if Disney buys everything, okay, yeah. um, what indie filmmakers will do will literally make, um, what do you call it, um, generic versions of those characters that already exist. And make it the way they oh, yeah. want. So if you want to make a Superman movie, but you know you don't have the rights to make a Superman movie, you literally do every last ounce that you can to make it look like the appearance of a Superman movie. Just give it different names. And make those characters do those things that you want to do. Tell those stories that you want to tell. And no, you don't get it to look like Superman. But you get to tell the story. You know, there's more to it than just the appearance, right? That's why, you know, you've seen Invincible, right? Uh, yes. Well, I've seen, like, the art from it. I haven't seen, like, any of the actual show. Okay. Um, well, shows like Invincible or, like, um, The Boys. Um, not that I've watched The Boys. Um, they take pre-known superheroes, even though, yes, they were adapted into comic books, but the idea of those superheroes, and they flesh them out in a different costume, different way, because these creators, literally, everybody knows what those characters are based on in that universe. It's like, that's clearly the Flash. That's clearly the Superman of this world. That's clearly the Batman of this world, right? Um, But it's like, yeah, but DC wouldn't dare make the story like this. They don't want to. They want to waste time on stories that nobody cares about. So we're going to make those stories with characters that, with the equivalent of characters in our own universes so that you can enjoy those experiences and have a little bit of fun with it and have it be meaningful too. And I think that's what would happen if Disney bought the sun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then they try to sue everyone. For using the sun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Disney. But no, you're right. And I mean, that's kind of what, like you said, it's already happening to an extent. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well. Let's end this podcast. Hey, everybody. Thank you for listening. I, I don't even notice you were even there. So I'm not even going <laughs> to say anything more be, than that. Uh, Bye. This might have to be two episodes, a Batman Arkham Origins episode and a wow, Suicide yeah. Squad. And if you okay. were listening early enough, you can also get my Halo Reach review. And that was about two minutes long, and I hope you enjoyed. I know how much everybody was wondering what Brandon thought about Halo Reach. Goodbye, good night, everybody. You have a good day. <laughs> and cut. Right. Okay, I am going to hit end.